We'd like to invite Mr. João Korngold to the stage. João is one of the founders and directors of the Spiritist Group of New York and the Spiritist Alliance for Books. He is a Spiritist for more than 18 years and has been on one of the directors of the mediumship meeting for the past 10 years. He is also responsible for Thursday's study group at Spiritist Group of New York that focuses on the basic books of Spiritism and on the Andrea Luis collection. His talk is entitled Reincarnation and Family Ties. Welcome, Joao. Hello, yes, you told me to speak on the microphone so everybody can hear me. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I hope you had coffee so you can stay awake for my lecture. Um, you know, as uh, was said before, there were two lawyers speaking in the beginning. Now you have a banker, so it's all going downhill from here. Erodo <laughs> said that uh, you know, the Wall Street guy with our money suit and uh, the Porsche. I have only the old Wall Street guy part of it. I don't have the other uh, Porsche and our money, but uh, you know, we are going to try to continue with the subjects that were spoken here today uh, as we are going to talk about family ties and reincarnation and basically the reincarnation process. Now, with all that we've been hearing about forgiveness, about uh, being able to forgive ourselves, to forgive others, family is what comes to mind first, right? Because if we have problems in this life of relationship, most likely 99% of our problems are related to our family to our relatives. Now, there are two types of family, if this works. Oh, yes, we have to put the... <laughs> okay, there are two types of families that uh, we normally have. Our eternal family, the spiritual family, the families that we have in the spiritual world, the families that uh, we Oh, yeah, now oh, it's working. Uh, that we form in the spiritual world throughout our existence and the families that we have in our present existence, our blood family. The family, this family that we have in this existence, it's normally composed partially from uh, individuals from our spiritual family and part from individuals that are not so dear to us, that we are here to readjust, that we are here to make amends. And uh, we learn a lot about self-forgiveness, about forgiving others, and that's what we have to exercise when we, have, we are dealing with our uh, families from the physical realm. Joana de Angelis tells us that the family is always a blessing that God grants to the spirit on ascension in order to help it to exercise fraternity and understanding so that it can prepare those of a universal nature. So we know that we are here for a reason. We know that we are here to progress. We know that a very important part of this evolution, of this incarnation, is taking care of our personal relationships with our family and with our close ones. Now, let's talk a little bit about reincarnation, because how did we all come here? What is in the process of reincarnation? And we are going to go back to André Luis once again. In the book Missionaries of of the light, uh, there is a passage on chapters 12, 13, and 14 that deals with the reincarnation of Sigismund. 
And it is the most comprehensive explanation of the whole process of reincarnation that we find in André Luiz's books. And uh, it's really worth reading and studying because that's where we learn in detail how the process of reincarnation works in the spiritual world. So it's basically on the, the case of Sigismundo who in a previous incarnation uh, was reunited with Adelino and Raquel, the other two uh, uh, person, uh, individuals of the story, that they were together and in a fit of passion Sigismundo killed Adelino and Raquel became involved in prostitution and they all came back to the spiritual world with heavy karmas. Uh, Adelino and Raquel are reincarnated and accepted after many, many years in the spiritual world. They accepted before reincarnating to receive Sigismundo as a son so they can all overcome uh, the differences and the hatred they had towards each other. Andrea Luiz, as always, is accompanied by a mentor in the story, like in all books. In this book, the mentor name is Alexander. So, uh, but what's happening is that uh, they are already incarnated, uh, Delino and Raquel, they have a son. But when Sigismundo approached them in dream, he, Adelino, repels him and he refuses to forgive Sigismundo. Why? Because when we come back to the physical world, we forget about our past existences, we forget about what we are here to do. We have an intuition, but we don't have a full remembrance. And what we bring is those inner sentiments of love and hate that we don't understand really where they come from in this present life. It's imprinted in our conscience. So we don't know exactly how to deal with them. That's why sometimes we see people that um, we never met before in this present life and we feel the sentiment of sympathy or antipathy and we don't know how to explain. This is most likely related to our past lives and we are reuniting with them again. So Andrea Luis becomes very interested in uh, following the process of reincarnation. He never had the opportunity of following up, following up close the process of reincarnation and asks Alexander if he could follow the case. Alexander agrees with him, but tells him that uh, before they start, it would be very important that he spend some time in the Institute of Reincarnation in, this, in the colony Nosular, where reincarnations are planned. And uh, when they are going to this beautiful uh, building, they, he sees a lot of people in the, uh, walking towards the building with, uh, with guides. And Alexander explains that all of them have plans for their incarnation, are different workers that work in the institute or are there to assist in the process of reincarnation. Um, they are specialists in the biological process of reincarnation. In the design room, uh, André Luis becomes very surprised on, on how much work uh, is spent in the, in, the work, in the process of reincarnation and he asks if this is how all the reincarnation processes are work. And, uh, and at that time, the, the person who is helping him there, who is Manasses, tells him that um, not all cases of reincarnation go through this very labored work. That most cases follow the normal process that uh, we, it happens here also when we go back to the spiritual world. Most cases goes uh, in a natural process. So most cases of reincarnation are just a process of going back to the, to the, um, to the physical world. There is always a team working in it, but there are some cases the special cases, the cases where uh, the spirits in the process of reincarnating deserve the assistance because of the good work they have done either here in the physical world, but in the case of Sigismundo, in the spiritual world, he had worked for many years trying to correct uh, the mistakes that he made 
in, the, in his last incarnation, and he merited the assistance of the spiritual benefactors. So they go through some cases that we don't have time to go over here that are very interesting that you can read on chapter 12 of the book Missionaries of Light, each one of them talking about their specific cases of reincarnation and what they need uh, to, for their next incarnation. The case of a woman that doesn't want to uh, come here with a beautiful body, the case of a man who wants to come here and have a, a, a defect on the, on the leg. So these, these sufferings will help them not forget what they came here to do and not to get distracted because it's very easy for us to get distracted in our, uh, during our lives and forget our true uh, work, which is the spir spiritual evolution. Um, Andre was very uh, surprised to see that uh, there were, were, there were uh, screens showing each part of the body and the whole work that was done in the construction, preparation of the new physical body. And uh, he was surprised and, and he said how complex is the opportunity of being reborn. And so little he knew of how much work really involves the process of reincarnation in, in these special cases like the case of Sigismundo, but all of us, uh, all our process of reincarnation uh, is, there is a lot of work involved in giving us the best conditions for ourselves, for us to succeed in our physical existence. Now it's up to us to make good use of these attributes that we receive. We received everything we need. We are the ones that uh, fail to achieve what we are supposed to achieve. And, uh, and Andrea Luis learns that, that uh, there are very few with, their, with, what, with what they call completers, which are the ones who fu fully fulfill their task on the physical existence, that most of us fail to achieve as much as 70% of what we were supposed to do in our incarnations. So let's try to reduce this percentage to 20, 30, or maybe 50%, okay? And we are already making progress. So they go to uh, Adelino and Raquel's house, uh, and inside the house they find Sigismundo suffering, uh, in pain, struggling. And uh, Alexandre asks him to compose himself, because you can imagine if uh, the, the parents, or in the, this case the future father, is rejecting him, the fact that he struggles also, that he is uh, not feeling well within himself, it's not going to help the process. So Alexandre asks him, do not disturb them, they are having dinner, so let's just get closer and see what's happening in, at dinner. Uh, at dinner, what we have is um, Adelino very serious and without uh, talking very much, and the, the wife, Raquel, trying to reach him, trying to touch him uh, and we, with conversation, and he uh, answers just uh, very uh, dry and with short phrases. Uh, Alexander, Alexander says, that uh, in this way would be very difficult to make Adelino change his uh, disposition towards uh, Sigismundo for the reincarnation. So he uses the three-year-old son, who's my namesake, Joãozinho, uh, to, to, to reach uh, his father to see if he, he can make a difference. And Joãozinho starts talking to, to his mother and asking his mother what's going on with his father, why he's so serious, why he's so angry, and, uh, and the mother answers that, uh, that uh, he's uh, worried about work, worried about external things, and then he appeals to the father if the father could come and pray with them at night because he's three years old. He just learned the basic praying uh, lessons and he's very proud that he can pray and, uh, 
he can uh, talk to God. And uh, the father uh, says after to Raquel, Adelino says that he's been having his nightmares, that there is someone that uh, gets close to him. He doesn't understand exactly what this person wants from him, but he gets nightmares and he wakes up and he cannot sleep at night. So this is the sentiments that we have when we have those that uh, we have antipathy getting close to us. And we have these feelings of, it's uncomfortable feelings. And especially when they come during our sleep, what we have is usually nightmares, right? And uh, he said that uh, he's struggling with his dreams. And he has forgotten to pray. He has completely forgotten, distracted with his material life, he has forgotten to pray. So he's asking, he's telling Raquel that he should go back and pray. And he was going to come home earlier that night and pray with them. Um, so he comes back, they are praying, and all the spirits, uh, Joanzinho, when he prays, he's asked, he asks for the angels to come and to help the family. And uh, the angels in this case are our spiritual friends, Alexandre and Andrea Luis, and uh, Raquel's grandmother, and other spirits that are there helping in this beautiful um, room uh, illuminated with the sincere prayer from a three-year-old kid, because when you are three-year-old, you have all but innocence, and the innocence calls and enlightens the room and illuminates everybody around them. So they go to sleep. Raquel is the first one to leave the body, and immediately as she leaves the body, she meets her grandmother, um, and she's very happy to see her grandmother. Interestingly, interestingly enough, she doesn't see anybody else. She doesn't see Alexandre or Andrea Luis or any others. And Andrea Luis is very surprised, and uh, he, he asks Alexandre, why do doesn't she see us? And uh, Alexandre answers, we see what we need to see. She doesn't need to see us. We are not here for her. We are here for the, the husband. And if she sees us, it can disturb her because she can think we are um, angels. It could be overwhelming for her. So we're not here for her. We are here for the husband. She doesn't need to see us. We only see what we need to see. So she embraces her grandmother and stays there with her grandmother. Uh, Adelino comes out of his physical body and immediately, the only thing, the only one he sees is Sejismundo. And immediately he gets scared, he gets frightened, and he wants to go back to his physical body. Um, you went through this when you are sleeping, and then you have these nightmares, and you want to rush back to your physical body to wake up, to get rid of the nightmare. That's more or less what Adelino was feeling there. Um, but immediately when he starts trying to go back to this phys his physical body, Alexandre uh, makes himself visible to uh, Adelino. Remember, the more evolved spirits can make themselves visible to the less evolved spirits. The less evolved spirits can only see the more evolved spirits if the more evolved spirits make themselves present. And we had the biggest example of that in Arodo's presentation of Jesus appearing to Paul, right? Uh, Jesus made himself visible to Paul in spirit, and I can only imagine, as Arodo said, the light. It must be, well, he became blind for a couple of weeks, right? Uh, or something. So, can you imagine? But, well, Alexandre made himself visible to, to Adelino and asked him, uh, what's happening to you? why you are suffering. And, uh, and Adelino, what Adelino thinks is that an angel came to his rescue. Because he was suffering, he prayed, his son prayed, so an angel came to free him from his enemy. And uh, 
And he thinks, he say, I think this man wants to rob me of my life. Why does he think that? Because Sigismundo killed him in his previous incarnation. So of course he sees the man that killed him in his previous incarnation and his first reaction is, this guy is going to kill me again. So he's going to kill me because he doesn't remember, not the again. He's going to kill me. So he's afraid, he wants to go back to the physical body. Um, and Alexandre immediately tells him, what have you done with your notions of human sympathy? It is always very easy to love our friends, but we must realize that they represent work already accomplished in our process of evolution. So we go back to family. It's always easy to love the ones in our family that are close to us. It's always easy to forgive their mistakes. Now, the ones that are different from us in our family, that have different thoughts, that have different views, those are the ones that we are there to make peace with, to overcome our sentiments of hatred, of uh, uneasiness. So Alexandre asks Adelino to overcome these feelings of hatred, to forgive uh, this man that is trying to reach him. And we see here uh, Sigismundo looking very ill, very humble. It doesn't look like someone that is going to uh, kill anyone. Um, and we moved. So Sigismundo bows uh, before Adelino kisses his hand and asks him for help. He says, forgive me, brother. The Lord will reward you for the good you have done to me. And Adelino immediately feels something different, feels the necessity with the words of Alexander and the the request from Sigismundo, he feels the necessity to forgive and to give this brother a chance. And immediately, all this negative energy that was surrounding him dissipates and disappears. And he is then ready to accept Sigismundo as a son. André Luiz, um, Alexandre tells that uh, Andelino's forgiveness was sincere. The thick darkness of hatred has been dissipated. So, as they leave their home, Andrea Luiz asks Alexandre, but why do we have to go through all this? Were not there, aren't there enough spiritual workers and benefactors that can make this process work without uh, all this work, without us having to be involved here and talking to the father, to the son. And, uh, and Alexandre explains that uh, in some cases, it's very important that you prepare the whole ambient as much as possible, involving those that uh, are preparing for the task of the reincarnation, the parents, the children, so the, the results can be uh, of a better nature. Because uh, in most of the times when we, have, we go through this natural process, uh, we come here with our main tasks, but uh, it's very easy to forget and very easy to fall into uh, the old patterns of loving or hating of not forgiving, of not forgiving ourselves, not forgiving our brothers and sisters. So the construction of the whole uh, process was very important. And um, if, uh, if we go back to what Luis Lima said, what was happening with Adelino is that his bitter thoughts were destroying the genetic substance, poisoning the chromatin within its seminal sac, having changed his inner disposition, he will now on emit magnetic energies that will protect the elements for the lofty service of procreation. So 
So what was happening here, talking in English, is that uh, he was unable to get Raquel pregnant. Very simple. <laughs> so he was contaminating with his negative energies uh, his ability to, uh, to get his wife pregnant. And uh, how many of us carry those uh, negative energies within ourselves? And uh, we talked here about pregnancy, but uh, relating to all aspects of our lives, how much we poison ourselves and we poison others with our negative thoughts. But this, this was discussed before uh, by the speakers, brilliant speakers before me. So I'm not going to go there. Um, so now that everything is ready, are we ready? No, not yet. Still a team of constructors will have to come and prepare the whole uh, reincarnation per se, the physical aspect of the reincarnation. They were working on the spiritual aspect of the reincarnation. Now they are going to work on the physical aspect. And for, to work on the physical aspect, there is a team of constructors, a different team, that um, they are going to work in preparing our friends at Sigismundo Fidos. So they were there already with Sigismundo and Herculano when the Andrea Luiz and Alexander came back some time later, which was in the night that uh, Raquel was going to get pregnant. Um, so while Alexander is working of, with a team of constructors, Andrea Luiz tried to accompany, didn't understand anything what was going on there. Alexander tells him he's not prepared to understand what was going on, on there, so tell him just, uh, you know, find something else to do because there's nothing here for you right now. So he goes talk to Sigismundo and, uh, and he finds Sigismundo very sad. He cannot, he, he can barely move. Uh, what's happening with Sigismundo here is that, uh, of course, when the last moment comes, we think that we're not ready for it. So he's regretting asking for the opportunity of being reborn of the opportunity of reincarnate. He's afraid he's going to fail again. Um, he said that he was more upbeat, but then he's losing his energies and uh, he's afraid of not succeeding in this new incarnation. Alexandre, um, and Andrea Luis tries to help him, to tell him to uh, cheer, but it's only when Alexandre comes, of course, with the right words uh, saying to, saying, telling Sigismundo to have recover his faith and restore his hope because he can only hurt himself if, if he goes with these negative thoughts. And here we see why many of us are not aware of the process of our process of reincarnation when we are in the spiritual world. Because if we start thinking on our future life and we start thinking of all the problems we are going to face, of all the challenges we are going to have, we are going to poison ourselves with the thoughts that uh, Luis Lima told us. Our spiritual body can always also get poisoned with our thoughts. So we are going to harm our physical body. So Sigismundo is a different case. He's aware, he's following his reincarnation. But even though he understands the process and he's aware of what, what goes on there, he's failing to uh, gather strength to, uh, to follow up with the process. Uh, and what he says is that while he was in the spiritual world, he created uh, a small project of assistance and uh, he built the project from nothing and the project was working fine and of course he was afraid he was leaving the project behind how the project was going to continue without him you know the preoccupations we have when we think that uh, we create something that cannot go on without us we give too much of importance of our, to our work and we think the world cannot live without us so uh, Sergius Mundo is worried and Alexandre tells him don't think about it. The good projects we do will have, will continue to progress. P 
people will follow up on our work. There will be uh, always someone that uh, continues the good projects, the projects that are important and that are working. Um, it goes. So, that's one slide that I like very much. That shows that uh, as Sigismundo starts losing his conscience, the perispiritual reduction starts. Um, the perispiritual reduction, his, because what happens is, while he lived in the spiritual world, he acquired, uh, his perispirit acquired matter, because the perispirit is matter, that belongs to the spiritual world. When he's in the process of reducing and becoming uh, a baby, he's going to lose, leave behind matter that belongs to the spiritual world. If you remember Luis Lima's um, presentation, the etheric double is our physical, it's part of the spirit, the peri-spirit that belongs to our physical body. So when we go back to the spiritual world, we leave the etheric double behind because it belongs to earth, it doesn't belong to the spiritual world. And the same thing happens when we are reincarnating. All, that, uh, all the material of our uh, spiritual body that belongs to the spiritual world stays there and we bring only the part that is connected to our future uh, physical body. Uh, so he's shrinking until he looks like a baby. And then there is his party of uh, goodbye party, right? Uh, when, we, when we go back to the spiritual world, everybody here is crying, everybody there is partying. When we come back from the spiritual world, everybody here is happy, everybody there is crying. So these friends that uh, were friends with Sigismundo for many years, uh, they are there to say goodbye to Sigismundo. They are there to see Raquel receiving Sigismundo as a newborn son uh, as she's uh, getting pregnant at that night, receiving her future son, her and Adelino. And they bring flowers, they bring, it's really a, a farewell party, so to say. All those, all of us Brazilians here um, that uh, moved from here, we, may, we probably had our farewell parties, right? And we were just coming here, we would go back. Imagine a, a farewell party in the spiritual world. So uh, she receives, Raquel receives Sigismundo from uh, her grandmother, and light illuminates all of them, especially the couple, as they prepare for the new incarnation and to receive an enemy from the past, and to rescue through the family uh, our, our task of readjusting and receiving and recovering. So, of course, uh, the team of, uh, of constructors work in, uh, in Raquel bodies as, as she was sleeping, as they prepare choosing the correct uh, spermatozoid and to reunite with the ovules so you have the proper uh, match to have Sigismundo incarnated. Um, so André Luis and Alexandre leave and they were going to come back in the evening before Sigismundo was reborn to provide assistance to the mother in the reincarnation, in the moment of uh, reincarnation as, as Sigismundo was coming back to the spiritual world. During the first seven years, Herculano, which is the close friend of Sigismundo, who is going to be his spiritual guide, will be there helping and assisting Sigismundo closely, and then he continues through Sigismundo life as his spiritual guide or guardian angel, but uh, especially on the first se seven years, we have our spiritual guide very close to us. And then, depending on our choices, we have them close to us or not so close to us if we don't allow them. So, I would like to end with this phrase that 
true love is not found when one look at each other, but rather when they all look in the same direction, which is something that we have to think when we think of our families. Are we all looking into the same direction? Do we all have the same goal, the goal of forgiving each other, of working together on our spiritual evolution, on our spiritual progress? What are we doing with our lives? 